And as Senator Warnock tries to begin his campaign for the runoff against Herschel Walker, I want to bring in Kate Bedingfield, White House Communications Director. So, Kate, thanks so much for being with us. We got the green memo oh today. Good to see you. <laughs> so it was the economy and the inflation that was expected to carry the day. And that did not create a, the, a red wave. The president was clearly upbeat and you outdid all ex historic expectations. Abortion was more important. A democracy was more important. It, you know, and all of these things at his news conference. But let's talk about one, you know, big elephant in the room, if you will, which was that two thirds of those at the exit polls don't want him to seek reelection. He sure seems ready to do it after that family vacation where he and Dr. Jill Biden will, you know, poll the family. So how does he think about that? Well, look, I mean, I think, Andrea, across the country on Tuesday, you saw people turn out to vote for the Biden agenda. The president has put forward an agenda that's about lowering costs, that's about tackling the climate crisis, bringing down health care costs, forgiving student debt, uh, bringing manufacturing back to this country. And around the country on Tuesday, people had a choice and they overwhelmingly chose the Biden agenda. So, you know, in terms of what the president is thinking about 2024, you heard him uh, speak to that himself yesterday. He has said many times uh, it's his intention. But uh, right now we are focused on what we can do for the American people. He's looking for uh, ways that we can continue to make progress on this agenda that he put forward that led to, as you rightly said, a historically successful midterms uh, for a president. In Kate, uh, as we were coming into you, it's Hallie. We were showing um, Senator Warnock in Georgia. We know that the campaigning is beginning in earnest today, not just that event, but one for Herschel Walker later on tonight with the Republican senator who's coming into town. Should we expect to see President Biden traveling to Georgia? Well, President Biden will do whatever Senator Warnock finds helpful. Uh, he will travel to campaign with him. He will raise money for him. Whatever Senator Warnock needs, President Biden uh, is going to do. So we'll see what the campaign would like. But uh, the president stands ready to do anything that Senator Warnock would find helpful. So we're Without, still waiting um, to find out. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Still still quick... to... Go ahead. Go ahead. Allie. No, go for it. Go. Uh, just a quick just a follow up, Kate, because I don't want you to hatch it. Has the campaign reached out? Can you tell us anything on that front? Or to the well, White there's House? no specific, no specific conversations, no uh, specific detailed conversations that I can uh, give you all at this point, except to say, you know, look at what the president did across the country for Democrats uh, throughout this election. You know, he traveled. Uh, he was in districts of candidates who won their elections on Tuesday, who were running on the Biden agenda. You know, he showed up uh, in all states all over the country to campaign for Senate candidates, for House candidates. Uh, and we saw a historically successful night on Tuesday. He also, you know, at the uh, at his direction, the DNC uh, directed uh, millions of dollars into these races to help combat some of the special interest fueled money that uh, was flowing into Republican races. So he has uh, a successful track record uh, from Tuesday, was able to help candidates all across the country uh, and will certainly do whatever Senator Warnock would find helpful. I don't need to tell you, but we don't know who's going to control either House of Congress. We do know that the president had a call with Kevin McCarthy. I know you've been asked about this a number of times. Um, also with uh, Mitch McConnell. I'm just wondering if you can give us any specifics about what the agenda is going to be and what the president sees he'll be able to get done with potentially um, a, a divided Congress. Well, you're right. We don't know the outcome yet. There's certainly still a path, frankly, for the Democrats uh, to hold the House. So we'll see what the final tally looks like. But obviously, uh, the president is going to work with congressional leadership, as he has from the moment he took office, to continue to advance his agenda. He has said, you know, when he comes back from the uh, trip he's leaving on tonight, where he's going to, uh, to the G20, uh, he's going to COP to talk about climate and what the United States has done on climate on the world stage. When he gets back from that trip, he'll meet with congressional leadership and they'll talk about priorities moving forward. And I think if you look at his record, you look at what he's been able to do in the first two years, we've had uh, significant successes, including six significant successes with Republican votes. So should we need to work with Republicans moving forward? The president has been able to do that, and he will continue to do that uh, moving forward. That's certainly what the country wants. They want to see their government work together to get things done. President Biden has a great track record on that, and he's looking forward to working with the next Congress. Any specifics on what you might be pursuing? No specifics I'm going to lay out right now, but if you look at what President Biden said throughout this campaign cycle about what his priorities would be, I think you can see a clear commitment to protecting Social Security and Medicare, to uh, protecting a woman's right to choose, to continuing to make progress on lowering costs, to continue to bring down uh, the cost of health care, of prescription drugs. I mean, these are things that uh, he's been able to accomplish in these first two years, and he's going to continue to push. But he's looking forward to working with congressional leadership and, and moving 
moving forward on this agenda that the country uh, embraced on Tuesday. The president is about to go overseas, and you know he's going to be meeting with President Xi, as you well know, empowered President Xi, you know, president for life. There's a lot of talk that Taiwan might actually be sooner on his agenda, a takeover of Taiwan or some other conflict. What is the president looking for in that? And according to state media, Vladimir Putin isn't going. So there'll be no chance to try to get the temperature on Ukraine. And more importantly, maybe more immediately, figure out where the heck is Brittany Griner? We have not been officially notified in the U.S. government as to where, what penal colony. They're supposed to be horrific. She has been moved. That's all that the Russian lawyers were told. Well, Andrea, you heard the president speak to this yesterday as well. Obviously, he has uh, said we are doing everything in our power uh, to bring her home. There are private conversations that, for understandable reasons, can't be made public. But uh, he has, uh, has directed his team to do everything that they can to bring her and other wrongly detained Americans home. To your question about the trip uh, more broadly, uh, you're right. He will meet with President Xi. Obviously, he has a relationship with President Xi, has spoken with him uh, numerous times since he took office, since he, President Biden, became president. This will be their first in-person meeting. It will be a, a continuation of their discussion about what we can do to ensure that our relationship remains in a place of competition and not conflict. They will talk about uh, issues of mutual interest. They'll talk about issues of regional concern. Uh, and as the president said yesterday, he will also talk about uh, he will lay down places where uh, our interests conflict with China's and work through that. So this is an extension of, as you know well, Andrea, from having covered him for a long time, this is an extension of his belief that that leader to leader communication is really critically important. Uh, and so uh, it, it will be a productive conversation. And just very quickly, does the U.S. government know where Brittany Griner is? Those are not details that I'm able to provide publicly, except to say that the president is very focused no, I'm not on asking, this. Has directed, I'm not asking has where she is. Team. Do, do even, we know even, so, even so, you know well, a lot of these conversations just necessarily have right. to happen privately. Um, but the president has spoken with Brittany Griner's wife. He is very, very focused on this and has directed his team to do everything that they can to ensure that we bring her home. Andrea is raising a number of key issues, Kate, about the president's overseas trip, which is going to, I'm sure, dominate a lot of the discussion once he leaves for that, given what is on the table, as our chief foreign correspondent <laughs> is certainly aware. But there may be some news made at home while the president is traveling overseas. And that is the potential that is widely speculated about that as President Biden is with allies um, on international soil, he may find out that his former opponent in 2020 is going to announce a run again. What is the White House's strategy when you are inevitably asked about that overseas? What is the White House thinking on that front? Well, look, I don't think President Biden has ever hesitated when he's been asked what he thinks about Donald Trump, both his previous tenure as president and also the potential that he may run again. President Biden's never held back on what he thinks about uh, the risk, the threat uh, that Donald Trump poses to our democracy. So I won't get ahead of what the president uh, may say should this happen. We know there's been speculation. The date has moved. We'll, we'll let that play out. The president overseas is going to be focused on, uh, on the trip. He's going to be focused on the G20. He's going to be focused on working with our allies to, uh, to corral Russia's aggression. He's going to be talking about the strength of the U.S. economy uh, uh, on the world stage. So he's going to be focused on the business of the trip, and we'll let Donald Trump do what Donald Trump's going to do. Well, Kate Bengfield, safe travels. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate the it. The White House, I'm sure, has had a, a really exciting couple of days and more to come. Thank you.